Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to your uh, 837th edition of the Trader Merlin Show. I'm now going to keep track a little bit different than I normally do. It's the 837th show that we are doing today. It is, of course, Wednesday, hump day. We've got a, a actually, no, it's Thursday. Jeez, I, I'm, I'm losing track. It's that one day off. It just throws me off altogether. Uh, Thursday is our day today. We are going to talk about a 2020 for market outlook, which I plan on doing all this week and all next week with all of the different traders from you know all sorts of different asset classes. Today's gonna be a bit different because our guest David Warner is predominantly a Forex trader. So when we talk about you know the biggest things facing the markets, his market is global, which I think is a very different approach than uh, what most people are doing. If you're just trading the S&P, you know, do you really care what's happening with the euro, the yen, the pound? Yeah, it may impact you, but it's not as critical unless those markets are your trading markets. And that is the topic du jour today. So here's my, my graphic for David, looking all dapper in his tuxedo suit and tie, clean hair, all, all trimmed up. But here is the real David Warner. How you doing, my friend? Long time no see. Hey, Marlon. It's nice to be back. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, good. What have you been up to, man? It's been a, how many shows, man? That's, that's... It's just of, of Trader Merlin, this is the, today is the 837th show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I did, it's funny because yeah. I wanted to go back. Uh, my, my good friend Gary, he was the producer of uh, Power Trading Radio, and I'd like to go back and see exactly because we did – I've been doing this since 2020, and yeah. – you know, I take a couple of days off here and there, but not much. If you think about doing 200, I did 207 shows last year. Um, for Power Trading Radio, I did that for a decade, which means I'm probably right around 2,000 shows. So now I'm, I'm here I am getting close to 3,000 shows of, of live on-air production. So it's been fun. I never thought I would ever, uh, you know, get that sort of, uh, I guess, uh, stable of content under my belt. But here we are, and I, I, yeah, I'm not stopping. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, I enjoy doing these shows with you, man. It's nice to be back. It always, it's always good. It's always good to uh, share perspective, see what you're up to, uh, what's new in your world. So let's start um, right off with our first kind of question. And we can go any way we want, but I do want to um, go into the questions to begin with. So I'm going to start off with our first question, which I ask everybody, and it's going to be slightly different for you, which is what is your biggest concern for 2024? As we roll out this new year, a lot of stuff could happen. There are certainly pieces that we look at as equity traders, which may impact the U.S. markets, but but you're kind of global. So what is your, you know, your biggest concern for 2024 as a currency trader? I, it's, I'd assume it's pretty much along the lines of the other asset classes too. I think it's just uh, the central bank policy and just kind of the uncertainty of kind of like the path of the kind of future rate cuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the market is um, has pretty aggressively been, at least the Fed has been pretty aggressively, uh, the market has been pretty aggressively uh, pricing in uh, Fed cuts. And then I feel like the Fed is pushing back, but the market's just like, nah, we're not listening to you. We don't hear you. Right. And they just keep pricing, pricing that in. And so, um, you know, and that's really kind of really all the all of the central banks right now. Like I feel like they're all trying to like the central bankers are saying something different than like what the market is actually doing. You know, let me let me ask you on that one because uh, you know you mentioned central bank policy, and obviously you are uh, a self proclaimed nerd, and I I think nerd is a, is a positive term uh, when it comes to the Fed and understanding and watching all of the central bankers and policymakers around the world. We could make arguments as to, yes, we're going to get rate cuts or we're going to get pauses. Right now, as of this exact moment, I'll bring up the chart over here for my viewers. This is what the forecast is for December of this year. Uh, that is literally looking to the last FOMC meeting, which will be December 18th. Right now, the odds are that we will, at that meeting, be 1.5% lower. So if you're doing 25 basis point cuts, you're talking about six rate cuts this year. That's what the market is pricing in. What, what Are you... You think that that's possible? Are we out of line? Is someone smoking crack? What's what's going on there with that prediction? Uh, honestly, I think it's possible. Um, I I'm I'm trading that way. I think like when we kind of at the end of last year and going into this year, we really saw things start to um, kind of pick up against the dollar, and so fundamentally, that's the the trend that we're that we're chasing. 
um, to kind of start the year. I feel like there's been some kind of pullback on that. But like if I looked at, I think if I looked at kind of where the prices of these major pairs are today versus where the prices that they're going to be at the end of the year, I think even if they don't cut as many times as they do, um, I still think we're going to see quite a bit of dollar weakness uh, this year. Um, I think we're going to get, you'll just get kind of the, the, the random kind of corrections, but I think like kind of like the big trades, the swing trades, um, it's, it's definitely dollar weakness. Um, I think, you know, when the, uh, uh, when the kind of, we got into kind of the, the cycle of raising interest rates, I think it was like kind of like the United States and the, and the dollar was the most aggressive in raising interest rates. Right. And honestly, I think it's going to be the same way on the way down. And I think even with the, and, you know, even with the election year, um, I think the market are the, I think the Fed, central bank, especially the Fed will probably even be just a little bit more aggressive uh, in cutting rates, just so the economy kind of propped up during the election season. Mm. More aggressive. I don't know if we want to see that. I'm, I'm actually was going to bring up the FOMC here, but I can't bring up that dang page. Where the heck was it? Uh, huh, well, I'm not going to find it right now, but I will, I'll bring it up here in just a second so we can look at some of those data points. Um, you know, you look at that dollar chart. The Dixie is typically what I'm looking at. And I, and I have the chart up here for the viewers at home. This goes back into 2016. And, you know, we really were aggressively raising rates, let's just say in 2022 and in 2023. Um, but you know, we peaked out on that dollar index right around 115. And now it looks like that that big surge from 2021 into mid to late 2022 is is over, right? We had that rally back up in, in late 2023, but it's now coming back down towards that 100 mark on that dollar index. So if we continue to see the talk grow about rate cuts, um, and that obviously puts pressure, more downside pressure on this dollar. Are you are you looking more as kind of a general short on the dollar at this point? Hundred um, percent. I have a chart I can show you on the dollar index. Just Anytime kind of you want. You. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm no gonna pull it for you. And if you guys have any um, questions about specific uh, currency pairs or you want to see anything specific, just type it in the chat there. Um, Liz, you asked uh, or Lisa asked a question about David doing the mastermind community because he's not working with OTA right now. That's a uh, that's why. Um, yeah. yeah. I miss the Mastermind community, but uh, yeah, I haven't done a Mastermind community in uh, quite a few months, but um, uh, let me show you what I, hold on, sorry, one second. Let me yeah, share no my problem. screen. Well, ready when you are. Okay, can you see it? Uh, that's your only fans page. I don't know if that's, uh, okay, no. <laughs> right. uh, 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 there we go. I love the red arrows. <laughs> down, yeah, down, exactly. down. You, exactly down 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 and so Ooh. like um these are like uh, these are just the the dollar index broken down and kind of the the major price points that i watch and kind of each one of these is i, I just basically move the market from line to line right. so um, the dollar index actually ended the day or it's it's kind of kind of punching up right against one of our kind of the one of our big price points here, that but 102.50 um, mark. Yep. Yeah. This 102.50 mark. And so like the, I think we're going to kind of park out here, park here, uh, waiting for the big non-farm payroll report tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, the idea is like every single one of these lines, if I get one, it's always just going to be kind of like a push, a push, try to sell down. And so, um, I, I follow, you know, I can follow my own, uh, you know, kind of some other kind of traders and kind of Forex people and I watch and, um, you know, there, there's forecasts, uh, that at the end of, you know, 2024, if, if interest rates do, if they do cut as aggressively as they're kind of forecasting that we could see the dollar index trading closer to kind of the 90 mark. Ooh. And that's, that's, yeah, that's, a that's, I'm looking at that as like a, a pretty big move, but like, in between each one of these, you got about 250 pips, 250 points. And so the way I look at it is if you kind of, every time you kind of get to one of these big price points, you can see them. They're just kind of like the big quarters. Uh, you risk about 50 pips, 50 points around them. And you got, it's like, you got a five to one, uh, 50 for 250. So, but I'm only really looking for the cells. If it went above there, 
Uh, let it do whatever it does. We can try here at 105. I don't, I don't think we're going to get up there. But um, uh, yeah, basically each one of these would just be a, a sell, a sell down. But um, I think it's a really, really big price when we haven't hit the 140 yet. Um, I think that's obviously a big. Excuse me, the 100. That's the next big target there. Um, well, let's talk about time frame here because um, I think it's a little bit, and I just just this is for safety reasons in case the FTC is watching. <laughs> Um, right. If I if I look at that chart, you know you've got those red arrows going down. That is a I'm just going to say a ridiculously fall uh, quick fall, right? You're, you're those red arrows almost make it seem like okay by mid March to early April we'll be at 90. In my opinion, no, if that I, does I didn't happen, mean it. I know that's why I wanted to say you're you're it's probably going to happen. If it does happen, it'll be later in the year unless it's just like it just falls apart which i don't see that happening but i do see the drift lower that you're isolating there yeah i don't i don't see it happening like that either but um yeah the point i wanted to make with it is yeah this is going to be kind of more of a longer term yeah right that's what uh, i wanted to clarify -term, yeah more of a longer term drop so these are weekly candles right here um you know this uh yeah i think i honestly i do really do believe that we're in this cycle mm -hmm. uh this is like if I looked like this is like this is the raising interest rates or the um, uh, kind of the cycle of raising interest rates. Now we're in the cycle of kind of lowering interest rates. So right. I think I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a big drop. But I guess we'll see what 20 I, I guess we'll see when it starts to happen. Yeah. I mean, and look, that's the reason I'm doing these shows is because everybody has an opinion and an idea about what's going to happen in the market. And, and this is not to say that, guys, that that David is 100 percent right here. In hind no. we'll know in hindsight, we can look back and, and we know we can pull aside and go, see, I was right. See, I was right. Um, but it's it's important for me anyway to look at this data and say, if this does happen, and and I actually in this case looking at that chart, I, I you know I've been very bullish on the dollar for a long time. But if we do right. see these rate cuts, especially six of them in the coming year, that's what the markets are pricing in, that dollar is going to be much lower. And, and I think some of that may be pricing already. But if it does go lower, and I got two questions from here right now. Uh, one from Les says, if the dollar goes that low, what will it do for equities? And Joe says, does that mean that the equity markets are going to surge? What do you think? You know, honestly, just based off of central, off of interest rates alone, um, the equity markets, I think are, it's typically, oh, the equity market's going to surge when rates are hot. And I think like, I think we could see kind of a grind higher, but I don't necessarily think we're going to see the trajectory that we've seen uh, kind of coming to kind of close the year out. Um, but honestly, I think like, I think the stock market should have a good year overall um i i honestly I'm, I'm bullish on it i you kind of already talked about just being in a, an election year i can't imagine that we're going to be kind of in a recession ish uh type of economy during the election year i think i honestly do believe that the fed is going to probably cut rates faster than they want to uh and then like 2025 after the election is over is going to be a completely be a completely different story. We'll we'll make sure we do another show at that point. But um, yeah, I, I you know there's so many factors that come into coming up with a market forecast, and of course we will look at your forecast here of the S and P at the end of the year. Um, but you know you've got the elections, you got interest rates, you got inflation, you got GDP, you got unemployment, you got so many different factors, and I think one of the unsung pieces here is that dollar index. And you know, looking at right. that chart that David just showed you, if that dollar does fall to those extremes, and, and let me show you guys here the numbers that I have mapped out. Um, that fall that we saw going back from, this was in October, right? This decline in the dollar from October, which conveniently is what? That's when those equity markets ripped to the upside. So you had that sell off. That was only a 6.27% drop in the dollar index. Now, from current levels, if we went from our where we are today to that 90 mark, which is what David mapped out, which is this low kind of double bottom we had back here in 2021, if we get down there, that's a 12% drop. Um, so just wanted to show you that because that is a an extremely substantial decline in the value of the dollar. Now that of course would bring in more money to buy U.S. goods and services. It'd probably increase tourism here in the United States, and that in turn uh, should and plus commodities are all priced in dollars, which means people can buy more of those commodities. Um, therefore, 
I think that that would be a kind of this unsung catalyst that is uh, massive for the equity markets. And, you know, I, I chose my number for the forecast based off historical rates of return. But, um, you know, I think that this could be very, very powerful for the U.S. equity markets and maybe global equity right. markets as well. Because as goes I think the U.S. So, man. Yeah, I, I really honestly do think we're going to get that. Uh, I think it could be a big year. Um, and I, it's the other central banks are going to cut rates as well. Um, and that's the real question mark is I think I think the dollar is going to be the I think I honestly still do believe the dollar is going to be the kind of the quickest uh, one to cut the rates, but mm -hmm. like there is going to be a little bit more of an unknown. I think trading like the euro pair, pound pair, Australia, New Zealand. I I know it's it's kind of early, but I think that the uh, I'm going to share another. I'm just going to share another. Can you see my chart right now or no? Yeah. Yep. We got it. Okay. Um, like honestly, the the currency that I'm the most excited about, kind of going into 2024, is the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Which is like it's kind of like the ultimate. Uh, you trade things against the Japanese yen. It, it typically is kind of like the ultimate central bank story, or like right. kind of the central bank pair, uh, because it's always kind of the. It has it's the moves are really really tied to central bank policy. So since the uh, since the Fed has kind of just started hinting that we're end of a uh, end of a an end of a cycle you can see that the dollar yen has been has been dropping off and so the the current rumor out of the bank of japan is that they're going to start normalizing central bank policy as all of these other central banks are going to be cutting rates and what that that kind of it it leads us into like a central bank divergence where you have central banks kind of going in the opposite direction, which is typically like a, it's typically like a perfect storm uh, for um, a, a currency trade or for mm -hmm. kind of like a big, a big, big trend. And so this is kind of like, this is, I don't, I don't know if you can see my dollar yen chart here, yep, but um, this is just like using like major price points using basically dimes and nickels um been in here a million not a million times been in here a handful of times i'm always kind of talking about big price points and these are just the ones kind of easy to understand to kind of trade through but um you know as we if this should be you know just another kind of a pair that we can kind of start looking at this basically almost even 500 pips at a time we have a little bit of a rally here um there's a real the real question mark with the bank of japan right now is how soon uh, they are going to start uh, normalizing monetary policy, which basically just means not, not maybe potentially getting out of negative interest rates, which they've been in during the whole pandemic. But um, well, hold on, wait before you go any further. Uh, before the uh, before the whole pandemic, guys, here is the chart. Uh, yes, it's here's the chart of the Japanese yen. Um, rate policy they've been negative 0.1 as long as you can see on this chart um yeah. I, I can only go back to 2000 and late 2015 they haven't done anything to change so the question here from liz says hopefully japan won't cut i don't think that they're gonna cut i mean how can you go from here and go deeper um i don't know i, I don't think they would cut i've been i've been actually expecting them to go p into positive territory and start to yeah. raise a little bit just to you know incentivize saving in their country but uh, apparently not yeah, I think this is the time to do it. And this is like that's that's the real uh, that's the real question mark right now. It's, it's they've been negative. Like they've had zero interest rate, negative interest rates. I think it's like seventeen years since they've actually kind unbelievable. Of like, it uh, it is unbelievable. Uh, but I do think yeah, that's kind of like the next move for them. Isn't like it's not a cut. Like there's the rumor that they could actually raise interest rates, and like that's that's going to lead to some really really big moves down um i don't really love to kind of look at i i mean i was listening to um uh, another podcast myself and they had it was like some bloomberg not a bloomberg but excuse me like a goldman sachs uh currency fx head of like whatever mm -hmm. and this was what the last bank of japan uh event was and he's like we have a fair value uh dollar yen price of like a dollar 26 which is all the way kind of down here around this purple line wow. 126 excuse me so just to give you an idea of uh kind of how deep this thing this thing could drop but i honestly do feel that like if like even if uh this is 
these are going to be some of the, I feel like these are going to be some of the best trades for us going into 2024. Um, uh, big, you know, just big 500 pip, you know, moves. Um, you risk 50 to 100 pips on any of those. You got a five to one or a 10 to one each time. But I yeah. think it's, uh, uh, this is, this is, this is the trade. This is the currency pair that I'm most excited about next year. Yeah. That, that's, um, that's an 11, uh, 11.38, roughly 11% drop from current levels to get to, uh, down to that 126 mark you mentioned. That's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Well, I, I hope you're right, and I hope you're shorting it. <laughs> short, short. Oh yeah, hell. yeah. I've been honestly good. Uh, really, really good. This has been. You know, I've always been a kind of a yen guy, um, and this is like. I've had some of my best trades of 2023 on this, and I think I'm going to have some of my best trades of 2024 on this as well. Uh, but it was like only I would only be buying on the I'll only be buying was kind of the theme of 2023, and then only be selling is like my theme of 2024. So um, I got to pay interest to kind of hold these positions overnight. That's that's the one. Your carry you know, trade, downfall. yeah, carry trade is unwound, but uh, um, I'm I'm excited about it. But I think it, this is just another one. I think we're kind of like right around kind of one of my price points to try to to sell from. I have this kind of channel line that I think we've kind of broken up, maybe tests a little bit higher. But um, I I like the short for sure. Um, I was actually gonna. I was trying to. Um bring up something here i have some old some old uh marketing pieces <laughs> if you will yeah. yeah well it's one of my favorite ones i've done with you and bear with me as I, I bring this one over everybody i'm trying to find hopefully i can find it here before it takes way too long and i'll have to just finally wrap up um but it goes back to i want to say 2021 when we did one with you it was called the japanese the yen love affair that was like yeah. I think one of my favorite yeah. graphics i've built uh, I don't know where it is, but I, I going through 800 shows right now, trying to find one graphic is is taking me a little bit longer than I anticipated. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now I still have the, the 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 love affair is still very strong. It, it went away for a while, right? It went away for a while because you were, you know, you, it was a dollar love affair, and now now we're yeah, back it's to a dollar, and then I'm back to the dollar. Now I'm back into the yen. It's just yeah, I, I you know, it's been pound for a long time. You just switch it up. I gotta say, I do some pretty cool graphics. I'm going through my, I keep all my uh, my thumbnails that I've done for these shows over the years, and some of these are you pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah, I know you are. Yeah, well, you, you gotta have some fun with it. Um, anyway, I haven't been able to find it, so I'll, I'll give up with this one with your yen love affair that I can embarrass you with today. But um, so you're obviously bullish on the Japanese yen. Does that translate over into obviously bullishness with things like the British pound and going into the euro? I mean, you would you would imagine that a weak dollar is going to rise all the other currencies or is there an outlier there that you see? No, it, honestly, like I, I, I've even, like I set up some charts before this even started and like, it's, it's really, um, pound is one that I'm, I'm pretty excited about right now. Um, but you know, this has been like, even if I move this out into, I'm going to move this into a bigger time frame here, just real quick. And, um, these are weekly candles and like, Honestly, like I feel like we're gonna get um, back. Like I, I could see this, you know. I'm honestly 130, 135, 140, um, and I think it's just like it's not gonna be obviously happening overnight. But um, I think kind of like the the big picture, if if it is a central bank story, this was this is basically the. Um, the raising interest rates yep. now we're cutting interest rates so and it's interesting I, if you look at the percentage gain from enough. current price to that 140 mark it's roughly 10 percent, which kind of goes in line with all the other numbers that we've been looking at right if you talk about right. the dollar selling off uh into a, an area of demand that was about 11 percent lower the yen the target was you know so it, it's kind of all coming full circle with these numbers where they kind of all line up i like that yeah yeah and on like i i i'm hoping that it kind of when you ask about like what's the biggest you know kind of the the threat or the thing that i'm worried about next year is that this whole like central bank narrative for some reason changes yeah because i feel like you have it pretty much in your mind i feel like it's pretty much mapped out here's the narrative we're doing rate cuts and you know while i don't know if we're going to get six or eight or four by next december there are going to be rate cuts, and therefore that should put more downward pressure on the dollar against other currency pairs. Therefore, short them if you got them. I think it's kind of how your mind is setting up for 2024. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like honestly, out of out of all of the currencies, I know we kind of shoot a few a few dollar pairs. 
But like honestly, just uh, the whole yen, the, the yen one, I think is going to be the um, the best the best opportunity or the best trade. Um, I also just wanted to share one more chart with you because I think this was a pretty exciting breakout. Yeah. I don't know if, can you see me? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is this is the um, Australia versus the Australian dollar versus the dollar. This is a weekly chart. And um, one of the things that I got pretty excited about was at the end of uh, at the end of kind of the last weeks of December, we broke out of this very kind of long term weekly uh, downtrend. Yeah. And kind of the last time we kind of broke out of something like that, uh, we had a pretty significant, you know, kind of rally to the upside. So this was just kind of another one that uh, I was excited about. Um, when you talk about like, you know, um, let's see where kind of gold does next year. Typically gold does pretty well yeah. uh, when interest rates are being cut. And like the last time we were in that type of cycle, uh, this is, we're right here. This is when gold was kind of the, you know, price all time high right here. And I'm not saying that this is where we're going to go, but um, this could, is, you know, yeah, I know, but yeah, I'm just saying. But I'll do it. Here I am, you know, 500 pips at a time or a nickel at a time. All right, but, but remember, you know, when um, you have a dollar so weak, commodity prices are cheaper for those that are, have yeah. foreign currencies, which means more people will be buying gold, or uh, theoretically, more people will be buying gold, and therefore driving that price up. Which is, you know, part of the reason I have. So I have a massive position in silver. I have a little bit of gold, but uh, yeah, I, I I echo your sentiment. I think it's going to impact commodities for the positive. Yeah. So yeah, same thing. I could do the same thing with uh, the New Zealand dollar, but the Australian dollar is typically the one that's mostly associated with gold. We got a little bit of a pullback here, but I think you know um, this kind of gets right around like sixty six cents. But I feel like we're getting into even just kind of like another good buy spot. Just start to start aiming for like seventy cents. Be the first hurdle. Start closing above seventy cents. Start aiming for seventy five cents. Opportunity abound. Uh, let me throw it. Yeah, let me throw a curveball at you. So yeah. right now, uh, we just looked at the CME Fed funds futures. They're forecasting that we're going to get six rate cuts by the end of next uh, end of this year. Um, I'm going to switch it up and say, you know what? I I've been making the argument that the reason that we have inflation under control is because of energy because we have crude oil had such a precipitous decline and that skewed all the metrics you can go back and look at the cpi and ppi data and the core pce price index and the single biggest impact as to why inflation has dropped has been crude oil if that chart starts to surge back up and i'll bring a chart up here just so you guys can stare at something other than my ugly face um when that crude oil chart if if it does surge back to the upside here that whole metric changes and inflation is now back on the table and then the discussion of rate cuts uh will be stay uh, will be what do we got stabled for a while um how do right. you how are you looking at that how are you potentially going to play a situation where we're you know inflation does rear its ugly head and all of a sudden here we are facing a situation where we might not get rate cuts and all of a sudden your game plan which we see pretty clearly mm. needs to change right are you still going to hold on to it or what are you, how are you going to play it no yeah <laughs> yeah and if, if that's it really is it's a it is an inflation story with the fed cuts and i think that's one of the reasons why they are trying to price it um so aggressively and, and and it you're right if inflation does start you know rearing its ugly head again uh, obviously this narrative completely uh changes yeah. but um you know i i i you know i i i'm optimistic about it i'm going to say it again i i you know that that would be i think like the whole like if we get like a real surge in the price of oil I think that would be something that's really coming out of left field. Uh, the, the, some escalation of something in the I was going to say, hold on, is it, you think that'd be left field? I mean, look, well, we, we're, we're bombing just, Iran. We've got the issue yeah. with with um, Hamas and Israel, which which stirs that whole Mid East region. You've got Russia, which is still like, come at me, bro. You know, let let's go. Uh, China is 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 kind of neutral at this point in time. But I don't know if it's from left field. I think anything could stir up at any moment. It's, I wouldn't say if I have the spectrum of there's zero percent chance and hundred percent chance. I, I'm putting it like fifty fifty. So this wouldn't be left field for me. No, yeah, I, mean, I get what you're saying in that, but I feel like what was happening. Like I feel like when the whole like uh, Israel. Uh, Middle East conflict started like the market was just like yeah. so 
laser focused on it. And then it like, we weren't really getting any escalation. And then like the market just like, well, you know, they just kind of put it on the back burner. But, you know, I, I will say kind of the, the headlines over the last few days with like the, you know, the, the Iran and then the, the, the bombings. And I, it, it does make you a little nervous, but um, that's what it would be. I think it would be like a, a, a real escalation in that, uh, that could really kind of cause this whole thing to kind of unravel. But, uh, if we don't get any of that, yep. no, um, smooth sailing. I think it, yeah, smooth sailing. All right. Um, uh, exciting stuff. So what, what else, uh, is there, is there anything else in your radar that you look at and you go, here's something I'm really paying attention to. I know that you look at a lot of central banker stuff. I know that you're looking at, uh, are there any, um, we know the elections in the U S are there any major, I, I don't know. I'm being, I generally want to know. Are there any major election issues or Brexit type stuff happening across Europe or Asia that uh, might impact your your trades as a currency trader? No, uh, um, no, not not really, not now. I mean, really, honestly, the main focus is really just the is the central banks and who's going to cut and when. The the real the one that's the the, the biggest unknown is really the Bank of Japan. Yeah, but their their next uh, rate event is. January 22nd. Um, so I got my fingers crossed that they announce something then. Um, but if they don't, we'll probably have to wait till mid year before uh, any real major trend does change. But um, that's, that's, that's the big thing. That's what I'm watching the most is the, is the central banks, which is pretty much what I watch mostly anyways. Yeah. Um, you know, on that note, you talk about Japan and, and obviously I've been stuck at a low rate. I actually pulled up a chart of it here. So the viewers, if you want to see it, uh, this goes uh, back to, to, uh, to 1999 when Prince was still rocking and doing some great jams. You know, th they have been pretty much over zero uh, most of that time. Obviously, they surged up here to looks about 0.5. Uh, but really starting back in, it looks to me about 2010 or 2011, they've been at zero. And then in 2016, they've been negative 0.1% ever since, right? They, so we'll call it uh, seven years now that they've been at negative 0.1. Now, in my mind, I think that this, as a, someone who studied finance, this is going to damage an economy. This is not normal for it to be like this. It seems odd. It's a broken system. Um at what point do you think, or do you think, that Japan's going to say, okay, let's normalize our rates, let's get them back to zero, um, uh, or do you think it's a possibility, and, and how would that impact you? I think it is a possibility, and I think they got a new Bank of Japan governor here recently, and I think that was, like, one of his, like, when he's coming in, like, his big, like, I'm going to be the guy that that changes this, and, um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's what Japan has wanted i think that's what japan has uh needs and i think like um i think they've been setting up for this for for a while so um i i, I see that uh you know the corporations and are already kind of budgeting for it and kind of planning for it uh out of japan so i think it's i'm i'm hoping it's a pretty much a a done deal um it's just like it's just as far as like timing right now yeah. how soon it's going to happen but you know, it's funny because uh, it's rumors that it was going to happen here this month, but they, yeah. that keeps getting. But and it, the market was trading that way, and then it kind of gets pushed out. But agreed, uh -huh. yeah. And I, I just look at it as you know, you you hear historically that a negative interest rate is just so damaging, but yet yeah. here's Japan with not showing any impacts from inflation, which is I don't understand it. How can you have negative interest rates and not have inflation? Um, but yes, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that one goes in the new year. I finally found the picture I was looking for, everybody. There it is. Uh, I'll bring it up for you. There. Oh, there it is. The Yen Love Affair. That was uh, one of my favorite graphics I've done. This is when David Warner was on back in 2001 talking about how he just oh. loved the Yen. It's a great one. It was a good one, man. I, I like having fun with you. Yeah, yeah. It's good <laughs> to be back, man. I, it's great. Um, yeah, we, it's been been kind of far and few between. What's, uh, what's new in your world? If uh, people want to find out more information about your teachings and stuff, where would they go find you? Yeah, I'm with uh, Trade with the Pros, and um, I'm running a, a, a Forex trading community there now. Um, I do, I could, you pretty much know my price-based trading strategy, so I teach that over there now. Um, run a trading lab 
uh, pretty much every day, sometimes twice a day, <laughs> two ones in the morning, two ones in the evening. It's a 24 hour market, but um, uh, it's great. Um, got a really great community there. Um, we're doing some day trading. We do some swing trading. A lot of my kind of longer term setups that uh, we're kind of focused on for the new year. I just shared with you here uh, here this evening, but uh, still doing the same thing I've I've been doing. I'm just doing it elsewhere. Nice. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll, hey, you gotta gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, it's it's great. I love it. Um, I'm gonna apologize in advance for the uh, butt whooping that your Cowboys are going to take if they ever decide to play the 40, if they can make it that far to play the 49ers. Uh, They're looking pretty good, man, but I always get nervous the closer we get to the playoffs because the, the Cowboys have the tendency to they'll get you really, really excited, and then that just sets you up for even just a bigger disappointment in the end. So basically the Cowboys are to football what the Dodgers are to baseball. Is that what you're telling me? I, I, I guess. And I love the fact that the Dodgers spent, you know, so much money landing these amazing players and they're still going to choke in the playoffs. I love it. I love right. it. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on your big fantasy football win. That Thank was, you. That was, uh, you know, it's funny when we, when well you deserve. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, David and I are in a, in a fantasy football pool. And I, when it started, I think there's 12 teams. I was eighth. Uh, they thought I would place number eighth and I ended up coming back with a vengeance. Thank you to a Dallas Cowboy, by the way. C.D. Lamb got me 40-plus points yeah, in the in finals. Kind of loose with that. Yeah, I, my team was doing great. And then at the very end, I was in the playoffs, but I got – I just – team just fell apart. Yeah, well, just just like the Cowboys. All right, well, um, let me know next time you're out in California, man. be good to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I right. will have a Halloween thing, so if you're interested, you know, come on back out for one of those. But oh yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, David. Well, hey, thank cool. you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, best of luck to you in your in your new year. We'll have you on more frequently. It just uh, sorry yeah, it's been a while. Too. Yeah, look forward to it. It's always All fun. Right, buddy. We'll we'll talk about your yen yeah, love affair sure. some more. All right, buddy. Yeah, definitely. All right, All right take care. Take care, buddy. Guys, that was David Warner. He is uh, one of our. Forex experts on the Trader Merlin show, uh, giving us just a little bit of a different perspective on his 2024 outlook. Um, I, I think it is a bit different because obviously he's looking at much more macro political stuff, um, not necessarily, oh, I didn't ask him his forecast for the S&P. Dang it. I'm, I'll get that one from him and put it back on our list here so he can now be a part of that. Um, but, you know, for those of you who are Forex traders, I know we got some of you in here that are trading not just spot, but also maybe the futures markets. You know, you saw a pretty compelling argument from David as to why short the dollar, go long currency pairs that are uh, crossed with the U.S. dollar or, or the major pairs that are crossed with the dollar. So um, interesting to see what's going on here in the Forex market. Let's see. Uh, what would raising rates above zero in Japan do to their government bonds? It's a great question, Dwight. I, I don't have an answer for you. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how the heck they can keep it at negative 0.1 for so long and not impact um, the rest of the world uh, or impact their economy, which it hasn't. It was pretty, uh, pretty bizarre. I, Margaret, I'm just trying to copy. I'm trying to copy Brandon Wendell and David Warner. Um, Scott McCormick didn't have a beard, so that's why I didn't play his video yesterday. I was like, you can only be on the program if you have a beard. That's it. So, so uh we're not going to have a lot of ladies on the show unless – well, never mind. I was, <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, I don't know. We both just don't want to shave, but David always has had that kind of little beard going. Unless you look at the graphic that we have for today. He was clean shaven in that one. It's actually a picture from our conference done with a little bit of AI. All right. Let me um, – let's go – yeah, exactly. Naomi, I don't get the no inflation part for Japan. Blows my mind. Honestly, it's just dumbfounded at how Japan has no real inflation effects from having uh, negative interest rates. So let me run through our top seven or eight markets here. We'll go from the bottom to the top. We had crude oil with a little bit of a sell-off today. Let me zoom into the current market action. There you go. So a little bit of a sell-off after that nice big bounce up yesterday. It was down 0.7%. NASDAQ continued its slide, although not aggressive. It was just a little bit down today. Um, given the way we closed the markets yesterday, I thought we'd see a bigger down day just because it closed near the session lows. But notice what happened today. It also closed near the session lows. So we've had two consecutive days where the NASDAQ not only was red, that's one thing, but closing near the session lows is, a, it's a, in my opinion, almost a more negative factor for it. Uh, again, I do think that you'll ultimately see it drift back down here to that 15,897, I'll call it 15,009 mark on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, sixth place, this is where it starts to get a little bit concerning here. You have the S&P 500 broke down below that area of demand, not really even a demand zone. It was just a touch point. Uh, if we go back here to the 20th of December, the low price was 47.43. 
The next day, we hit a low price of 47.50. Well, it's taken us two weeks to get back to that level, and now all of a sudden, that is broken. That's a pivot. Uh, it's a pivot low. Uh, the fact that we break that tells you that the uptrend that we've established from late October of this year is now broken. The uptrend is broken. That does not mean that it's not going to go up anymore. It just means that that trend, based technically off of kind of supply and demand methodology, is now changed. Now, what that means for me anyway is I'm starting to look for areas where it may pull back to. And, and the obvious one would be this area of consolidation that goes all the way back. Uh, well, not all the way back, but it goes back into November, where we kind of traverse sideways for a little bit. So that's what I'm looking at as that target for the S&P from this point. That would put us at right about, let me get my snap on here. Snap doesn't seem to work. Uh, target of 47, wow, dyslexic today, 45.75 is the target for those who want to know percentages. I know I've got some percentage lovers here. To get to the top of that zone, my target area, it's about a 3.3% slide from current prices. So we'll see how that uh, transpires. But this is the major news today anyway for me is the S&P has now broken that uptrend. It's pit, broke that pivot low uh, and now potentially going to be making new lows. So we'll keep our eye on that one over the next couple of weeks and see if we get down to those lows right around 45.70. Uh, Russell 2000 was fifth place, um, actually hesitated today, so not a big change. It was only down 0.19% for that Russell, so no big news there. Remember, it already broke those pivots. Dollar index, which we just looked at, had a nice big gap up yesterday, really just kind of hesitated. Not a lot of big news there for the dollar index. Top three podium time. Um, it's, it's misleading here because you have the new session has started for the 10-year bond, which was up 2.07% today, making it your number two perform, uh, number three performer, at least uh, with the new market rollover here. So 2% uh, gain for that dollar index. Again, long way from its its high we achieved back here in October of this year. And ever since that, dollar, or that uh, bond has been falling, it's good for the markets, and we have seen that reflected. All right, number two on this was gold, up 0.35% today. Not that big a deal, kind of small, uh, relatively insignificant. Technically, I don't see anything here that's noteworthy. This is a bullish harami if you want to play that game. And finally, Bitcoin. We'll talk a lot more about Bitcoin as we uh, uh, start next week. Next week, we are going to see a decision on a Bitcoin spot ETF for the ARC fund. They were the first one to apply back in 2021, I believe, for a spot Bitcoin ETF. And the final day for the SEC to make a decision on that is December or January 10th. So we'll see about that one. And then the next week after that, you have four or five different companies that have a final deadline where the FTC or the SEC needs to make a decision on it. So it'll be very interesting. What did let's say? Merlin, at some point, will you read out the list of names in your SPX uh, forecast so we know you have got our forecast? Yeah, uh, well, I'll just show it to you. Uh, there you go. Let's bring it over here. So, yes, I got yours, uh, Liz and Tomasina. I will, um, I'll do these by order, but you can see here we've got, uh, there's yours, Liz. Yours is on the screen at 5,225. That would be a gain of 9.56% for the year. Tomasina, year there at 12.31. But, yeah, I'm scrolling through here. Um, the one that is the outlier, and, Daryl, if we get there, man, I'll, I'll – I'll, buy you a bottle of some fine whiskey there uh 76 percent gain forecast for daryl uh 83.95 i don't think we're gonna get there but you never know stranger things have happened and then our downside um i thought this was kind of interesting we've got some people expecting massive sell-offs in the equity market and again guys this is why markets work this is this is why i love it this is why markets function because uh i have 48 people on this list right now and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine of you think we're going to be negative uh two one two says unchanged and the rest of you say we're all going to be up on the year so we certainly have an overall bullish bias um, per this audience to the tune of about five to one uh geo i i don't know if i got yours where'd you i don't remember typing yours in there geo just type it in a chat and I'll add it in. Um, I may have, but uh, if you don't, if you didn't see your name on this list, I will. Let me put an alphabetical order for everybody here, just so you can see it. If you didn't get your your um, your name in here, let's go to C's for Chio. Nope, I don't have yours on there. Uh, if you don't see your name on this list, email me tradermerlin at gmail.com and I will add it to the list. But I'm going to slowly go through here, just so you guys can see. There you go, um, Ricardo. I think I have you in here, but I'm slowly going through so you guys can see if your name is on it uh i don't see yours ricardo okay 
All right, well, I will uh, go through at the end here and put in some of those names. I know we got a few people that uh, didn't get a chance to make it into the uh, uh, the, the first day. What I'm going to do is I'll keep it open uh, probably till the end of next Friday because I want to get more and more people in on this one. But if I don't see it by the end of next Friday, that's when I'm going to cut it all off. And there you go. Okay, cool. I got your guys' names in there. I'll add you guys right now. Let's talk about what's cooking for tomorrow. Tomorrow is a big day. We have a pretty significant day for the U.S. equity markets. You can see here a lot of red on the screen. Red means typically very important stuff. So we'll start at the top here. You've got construction PMI for the British pound. You have some CPI estimates, which is inflation and PPI for the European Union. Then one hour before the equity markets open here in California, we have Canada with their employment change, unemployment rate, and then the trio of important stuff for us, which is average hourly earnings, non-farm employment change, and the unemployment rate. That's pretty important. All eyes right now are on the unemployment rate, which I'll bring up a chart here. You guys have seen over the past few readings, it's slowly starting to tick up. Now, the, the most recent reading dropped down to 3.7, but it was up to 3.9. Expectations where we're going to stay at 3.9. We'll see how this goes. Right now, expectations are we're going to jump to 3.8%. That would be fine. Shouldn't shock the market at all. But any real crazy outlier number there could have a big impact. Uh, and then once the market's open, you do have some announcements. Uh, 30 minutes into the trading session, you have the ISM services PMI, you have factory orders, uh, and then you have an FOMC member speaking about 1030 Pacific time. So that is your, your market for tomorrow. There is really nothing on the earnings front to speak of. Uh, next week, it's also very quiet for earnings, but uh, next Friday is when everything really starts to kick off. Now, let's talk about our upcoming uh, list of guests, just so you guys can plan. I was going to try to create a graphic for you, but I didn't have time to do it today. The guest for tomorrow is none other than Larry Jacobson. On Monday, I'm going to have Todd Davis on the program. And you guys know and love Todd. He's awesome. Um, I have a, a, I will say an outsider, somebody that I've met many, many years ago, and I have the utmost respect for him and what he does. His name is Jeffrey Hirsch. He is the I think the president runs the Trader's Almanac, which I am a massive fan of the statistics, the numbers, the analytics that they provide. If you have someone who is a trader, uh, buy the physical book of the Trader's Almanac as a gift. I think it's just a fantastic present. So he'll be on Tuesday. I have Jeff Manson will be on Wednesday, You know, future trader extraordinaire. I have Corey Lane. Um, we're not going to talk specifically options. We're going to talk about broad market. Remember, Corey runs a hedge fund. So it'll be interesting to see as a hedge fund, what's the approach? What things do they look for? Uh, and then Friday, I don't have a guest at this point because I think I'm going to be gone on Friday. Uh, I'm invited to a, a giant um, event in Riverside. So I won't be speaking, just attending. So uh, I'll let you know more on Monday about that. But that's the guest list for the next week. Uh, if there's anybody else you want to see, email me, tradermarone at gmail.com. It's on the screen right there. Um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed today's show with David Warner. That said, I will cut this show right now before you get the next commercial ad, which I hate to do to you guys, but it does make me a couple of bucks along the way. So thank you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow with Larry Jacobson. Any comments, questions, send them in to tradermarillon at gmail.com or put them down below any of the YouTube videos. I love when you guys comment there. I will see you tomorrow. Take care.